Hey guys, so I'm back. Hey guys, my name is Apollo Adler and I'm taking you through my journey of self-improvement and self-discovery using neuroscience as the catalyst to do so. I post new videos every day showing my development and growth as a person. Alright guys, so I just drove into town. You can see a Panda Express behind me, Deli Delicious, and a Starbucks. I'm actually right now using Starbucks' Wi-Fi. My wife Onyx and her friend Haley are hanging out. Since we've been back, she hasn't been had a chance to see her, and a lot's happened since she's been gone. And actually, before we left to go to the Azores, so she hadn't seen her in maybe four or five six months and then we weren't able to contact her before we left so then we just left we were able to, we contacted her when we were in the Azores and so we were able to kind of like talk about things and hope uh, hope that we can see her when we came back now that we're back we want to see her Onyx is over there right now catching up because Haley has had a baby she got out of a very hard relationship she was in now she's in another new relationship and pregnant again a lot of things going on in her life so uh, they have a lot a lot a lot to talk about but as for me uh, I'm editing a video and then I am uh, talking to you guys so I get to spend an hour enjoying myself uh, I, I haven't had a chance to work on the things I wanted to work on uh, uh, since I since I went to Santa Cruz it was kind of a vacation we came back and then we left directly to Vipassana same day then we came back and we've been trying to get our life back on track but it's been hard I'll talk about that more in a bit but yeah it's been it's been kind of weird um, it's been a weird couple days since since I got back before I went to Santa Cruz and Vipassana I had started writing the books about neuroscience and how we use it uh, in, in a lot of different aspects of our life to change who we are and change habits and things that we do. Essentially, you know, I wanted to be writing this thing and I just, I haven't been getting around to it because I've been gone for half a month. Trying to get back into it is not the easiest thing. It's been kind of hard to get back into the groove of things. Uh, I've been, I've been kind of struggling. And again, I don't want to lie to you guys, you know, I, I want to show you the most raw and the most honest version of myself that I can. The whole purpose of this vlog isn't to deceive you. It's not to tell you, oh, look at my life. It's great. It's great. When behind the scenes it's a struggle. The reality is what I'm showing you. Like I said, I went to Vipassana. One of the things is I wasn't able to stay raw there. They had a lot of cooked food. So I had rice a couple days. I had potatoes here and there. But for five of the ten days, I was able to stay raw. Having ate cooked food, it made it easier for me when I got back to eat cooked food. So that was, that was difficult. So I am eating cooked food again. Now that I'm back, I want to be picking up that 30 day raw challenge again. I started, I was doing really well. I was on day like eight or nine when I left because I went to Santa Cruz I was still doing good and went to Vipassana and struggled there. Now that I'm home, now that I'm back, I want to be picking it up again. So what Vipassana is, Vipassana is 10 days of meditation. The first three days is breathing meditation without saying anything, without 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 attaching it to a word, without attaching it to a god or a phrase or a symbol for you. Just do it. You breathe in, you breathe out, in and out, in and out. Feeling that sensation on your nostrils. And then the next uh, seven days were the actual vipassana practice, where it is um, trying to feel sensations throughout the entire body, going from my head down to my toes. And the last day, meta day, was focused on love and healing. So the first part of it, you, you take these five precepts, five shila, things like no killing, no stealing. The next thing we had was uh, sama samadhi, the right practice, like the practice of feeling sensations. And then panya, the actual meditation, so how to meditate, how to, how to feel sensations through the entire body. I learned so much about who I was. The issue is, after learning all that stuff about me, being back in everyday life, and my environment how do I apply it to my life it's one thing doing these things it's one thing experiencing oh a vipassana for 10 days beautiful 10 days and then being home when you're used to being negative when you're used to not meditating how do you make that switch you know how do you how do you go from everyday life to what you what, what you want you know your everyday life is if you're miserable Doing the same thing over and over again isn't going to make me happy. So how do you go from your everyday life, which you're miserable doing, to the extraordinary life? Meditation is a great way to get there, but it doesn't work if you don't meditate. I mean, you can go and learn to meditate, but if you don't meditate yourself in your home, that's not going to help. That's in Goenka. If you plant a seed, you can plant it in the most fertile soil you want. If you're not watering it every day, if you're not giving nutrients that it needs, if you're not giving the sunlight that it needs, if you're not giving it the shade that it needs, if you're not tending to it every day, it's going to die. No matter what you experienced, you only planted a seed. No matter what we did, no matter how good we felt, we've only planted a seed. So it's up to us to take care of it, to tend to it. 
He said, when we got home, look at the impact it's having on our lives. We should never accept anything because we're told to do it. Analyze it. Find out for yourself. Does it help me? Does it benefit me? Is it working for me? I've been looking, I've been looking at my life, trying to decide if I'm benefiting from my experience. The example was, if something happens and you get angry for eight hours, the next eight hours you're angry after what happened. If now, after Vipassana, the same thing happens and you're only angry for seven hours. It's one hour of your life you've saved. One hour of life you haven't wasted being angry. That's a very high return on what you put into it. If it benefits me, right, then I should keep doing it. So the past few days, I've really noticed with my relationship with things that I have a hard time with. Do I crave less? Do I want less than I did before? Do I hide less? Do I shield myself off from society and others less? And I can say it's affected me in a very positive manner. All right guys, I know I've talked a lot about Vipassana. Like I said, I'm having a hard time getting back in the, in the groove of things. So I have a couple plans for getting back into the swing of things. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do today or tomorrow, or tonight and tomorrow, what I'm gonna do exactly. So my vlogging will be relatively inconsistent the next couple days. I I want to be getting back on that daily schedule. So now because of the position I'm in, I have a decision to make. I have to decide if I'm going to be everyday vlogging or if I'm going to be vlogging here and there. I've decided that I want to everyday vlog, you know, for at least a while. And I want to vlog my journey back onto the raw, raw vegan horse now that I'm back from Vipassana. I'm going to be going raw again. It was kind of a bummer that the timing that the Vipassana happened just because I was already seven days into the raw challenge, which it's already a quarter of the way there. I've been given a very generous gift and seeing what it is that that my life could be and what I want for myself now I have to reach for it now I have to actually achieve it I'm gonna sign off for the night please comment below like and subscribe if you have not already I will be I'll be posting new videos every day about my journey my name is Apollo Adler I love you take care